Let's get started with Lesson 6 of Chapter 1. We're going to revisit the Fish and Shark project that you started in Lessons 1 and 2. Before you begin, open the notes document for this lesson and answer the questions as you go through this video lecture. Remember to put your name in the header. Our learning target for this assignment is to follow the four-step process in problem solving and design to write code for the Fish and Shark project in ALICE. The first step is to understand the problem. Let's look at the video again that shows us what a completed project will look like. We're going to create an animation in which a clownfish and a blue tang have a run-in with a shark. As the two small fish are talking, a shark will suddenly appear. The clownfish will panic, swimming away to look for a place to hide. He finds a treasure chest and hides in the chest. In order to create this animation, we must build the initial scene as shown here. Now we're going to understand the problem. The first part is to get down the scenario. I'm going to have you think about a summary for this project and go to your notes on this first part of step one and write down two or three sentences that describe what this project will do. Pause the video and write your sentences. Did your summary look something like this? A fish and shark are talking to each other. A shark comes along and frightens one of the fish. Now you could write a little bit more. You could say it in a different way. The main thing is just to make sure that you understand the problem by writing a short summary of what the project will do. We're going to further break down this problem by writing down the objects and props that are going to be needed and writing down the actions. This scene will have a clownfish, the blue tang, a shark who is lurking out of sight in the background, a cave, a sunken pirate ship, and the treasure chest. So what characters and props are needed? Did you write down that you're going to have a blue tang or Betty, a clownfish Emmett, and the shark Phil? You're also going to have as props the pirate ship, cave, and treasure chest. Can you write down the actions? Think back on the video and what are some of the things that the different objects did? Write this down in your notes. Did you write down things like talk or say, move, turn to face, and turn? These are most of the actions that our objects are going to do. Now we're going to work on step two, which is design. We're going to set up the scene, and hopefully you've already done that from lessons one and two, and we're going to develop the algorithm. Let's start with the algorithm. Remember that the algorithm is a textual storyboard. You're going to write it in your notes, and it's a step-by-step -step list of actions that are going to happen. Go back through the, the movie again. I'm going to show it right here, and start and stop it, and write down in your notes line by line what the different actions are. I know sometimes it's a little hard to see what the words are saying, so just do your best and then you can compare your algorithm with mine. We're going to create an animation in which a clownfish and a blue tang have a run-in with a shark. As the two small fish are talking, a shark will suddenly appear. The clownfish will panic, swimming away to look for a place to hide. He finds a treasure chest and hides in the chest. In order to create this animation, we must build the initial scene as shown here. Does your algorithm look something like this? I listed 10 steps. They don't have to be exactly the same as mine, but you should have very similar algorithm to what mine is. Now it doesn't say how things are going to happen, like it doesn't say how the Betty is going to swim around the treasure chest or how she's going to get inside but it does list what the actions are. Some of these steps are going to require more than one line of code, and that's okay. You don't have to have a sentence for every line of code, just a general idea of what the different steps are going to be. You're also free to add things to this algorithm. Can you come up with your own ending? Add two or three more lines of something for the fish and the shark to do. The second part of step two is to set up the scene. 
You have already set up your scene that you did in Lesson 1 and 2. So on your notes page, you want to take a screenshot of the world and include it. If you don't know how to take a screenshot, then ask the person next to you or get help from your teacher. Your notes should almost be completed at this point. The last step of your notes is to do the actual code. You're going to implement the design for step three. This is where you take your storyboard that you've written in your notes and you're going to change it into actual Alice code. Remember to use incremental development. You're going to write just a few st statements at a time and then test them and then make any corrections that you need to make, adjust the numbers, and then test again and get those few lines of code to work before you continue. This will really make it easier as you go along because your code can get pretty lengthy. And if you don't remember exactly where in your code a problem is, it will be harder to fix. So just do two or three lines of code and test and fix before you continue. You're going to have your storyboard and in the end it's going to be something kind of like this. You're going to translate your storyboard into code. Remember to go to test as you go by clicking on the run button. You should see your animations as per your instructions. If something's not quite right, go ahead and fix it right then. So revise and test as needed. Remember what the steps are. Check your code, revise, and check again when you run it. This is the end of this part of the note taking. Now you're going to open your Alice project and you're actually going to write the code. Now we're ready to actually write the code to this problem. I've got my solution right here and we're going to refer back to it. So we, as we're working on our code, we look at what the solution says and we're going to translate it into Alice code. But before we even do that, we're going to start by putting in our comments. This is a really good idea. This is a good technique to get used to. So we're going to start by putting in the comments and you should do this at the beginning of every program so you don't forget and you can always get credit for your programs. You're going to find the comment at the bottom down here on the taskbar. You're going to see the comment is the last one and it's green. You're going to drag it up here. It gives you a chance to write notes. So these are not compiled by the program. It's just a chance for you to write down and give some hints about what's going on. The first thing you should do is put your name. So the first comment is going to be your name. Then let's drag up another comment and this is going to be what assignment you're working on. So we teachers know what to give you credit for. We're in chapter one, and this is lesson six. So this is really important. If you don't put down what lesson it is, if you put down the wrong one, you might not get credit when you need it. Then if you want to, the next two are optional, but they're good. I can give it this a name. So I can say that this is the Fish and Shark program. So that's a little bit different than saying lesson six, because this is how it's gonna go in the grade book, but this is information for you so you know exactly what the program does. It's kind of like a description. If you wanted to, you could add another comment with a date. Sometimes it's inter interesting to know when you created something. Now as you go throughout the code, every time you have a few lines of code, it's a good idea to add in an extra comment to kind of divide it up. So if you are going back to make some changes later, you know which section of code. You don't have to look through the whole thing. You can just go to our algorithm and we're going to divide it up into a few sections and add in some comments. So the first couple of sec the first couple of lines here, it's just a conversation between the two fish. So I'm going to add in a comment for this conversation. And the first thing is that our fish Emmett says something to Betty. And he says, have you ever seen a shark? And she says, no, and I don't want to. So let's do those two lines of code. I'm going to start with Emmett. I can either click on him here or I can come to my, section, my list right here. We have Emmett and the first thing is say. I'm dragging this over here and I'm going to put, have you ever seen a shark? Then I need Betty. So once again, I can click there or I can come here to my list. And Betty is going to say no and I don't want to. And then my shark fill is going to come up close right behind the fish. Now I used the position tab when I set the scene so I know that I moved him back 20. 
If you don't know how far you moved him back, then you might have to guess and work on it a little bit to get it just right. But if you remember how far you moved back the shark, then you're all set to go. So I'm going to click on fill. And he's going to move forward. And I know that I moved him back 20, so he's going to move forward 20. If you're not sure, start with 20. The next thing we're going to do is run this program, and we're going to see if you've got the number right. If you need to adjust the 20 a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, go ahead and do that now. So this is the first time we want to, in our incremental development, we're going to stop and run the program and see that we get the numbers just right before we move forward. Now we're ready for our next section. The shark is going to say, hello, how about dinner? And then Betty is going to need to swim to the treasure chest. So let's put down another comment that says that the fish is going to get scared. So Betty gets scared. And your comment should be something different, but it's just a good idea to kind of divide it up as you go. So I'm still with Phil, and he's going to say, how about dinner? And Betty doesn't like that very much, so she's going to turn to face the chest, and then she's going to swim to it and around it. Now, right now, she is not facing the chest, so if Betty goes forward, she's going to come in this direction. So before anything else, she should turn to face the chest. I'm going to scroll down on my list of actions, and I see turn to face, and I can pick the treasure chest. Now she's going to be going in the correct direction. I want her to go forward. Well, how far forward? I don't know. I'm going to have to kind of guess. So she's going to move, scroll back up a little bit, forward, and then I'm going to guess, maybe one. When I run this, I see that she just barely goes. So then I make an adjustment. Maybe I try five. When I run this, the fish goes way past. So I need something in between one and five. You'll have to try yours because your fish size is going to be different and where you put your treasure chest is going to be different. So every student is probably going to have a different number of how far they need to go. So you can pause the video and work on your project until you get the fish going pretty close, not inside and not too far out, but just right around here. All right, did you get yours to go? For me, my number was 1.75, but like I mentioned, yours is probably going to be different. Now that she's right here at the treasure chest, the next thing she needs to do is go all the way around it. Well, first she needs to turn to her right, so she's facing the correct direction to go all the way around. If we keep her facing where she is, it's just going to be kind of weird. So let's have her turn, and she's going to turn to her right. A quarter turn, so 0.25. Now she she was facing the chest, now she's just going to go to the right, and she's all set to go. Now this going around the chest is actually two actions. She's moving forward, and at the same time she's moving forward, she's turning to the left. So we're going to need a do together for this. The do together is at the bottom of, of the screen on your taskbar. Let's drag up a do together. And both of the actions are going to be for Betty. She's going to move forward and turn. So let's pick forward. Now the question is, how far forward does she need to turn? I'm just going to pick a number for a second and let's talk about this. How far she's moving is the distance around the treasure chest. So how big is your treasure chest? Think about this as a circle and what would be the circumference of the circle? That's how far forward she needs to be. So 10 is going to be a pretty big circle. Five would be a smaller circle. You're going to have to decide. It's going to be a little bit of trial and error. So pick a number, try it, see if it works. You might need to change this bigger or smaller to get kind of this circle right around the treasure chest. For me, the number is going to be about five. Now, the turning is going to be the same for everybody. She's going to make one complete turn to the left. 
So I'm going to have Betty is going to turn to the left, and it's one complete turn. So both of these are going to go in a do together to go around the treasure chest. So this is a good time in our incremental development for you to try it and adjust these number, this number, leave this one at one, until you get her going just around the treasure chest. Okay, did you do it? Did you get your numbers correct? Let's look at our algorithm. Now she's gone around the chest, now she's going to swim inside the chest. And then the lid is going to close. Now she's kind of facing off to the side over here, so in order for her to swim in, she needs to face the treasure chest. Let's pull up another comment because our, we're getting a lot of code already. So let's going to put um, go inside treasure chest. So now she needs to actually turn to face the treasure chest. Now I found when I was trying this out that um, facing the treasure chest is actually down here. Remember that the center is usually at the bottom. So she's going to be kind of facing down and moving down. And that's going to be a little weird. So I'm going to have her face the lid. It's going to give us a little bit better results. So sometimes with trial and error, you can find things out, make some little adjustments. Now she's actually going to move two. So instead of just a move, now you could try a move and put a number there. Sometimes a move two is handy as well. She's facing the right way, and now she's going to move to not just the treasure chest, but the lid. This is going to put her right about here. Then she's going to move down to basically disappear inside the chest. How far down? Well, you have to try. It doesn't have to be very far. We just want to get her out of sight. So I'm going to use the move. And this time she's going to move down. And I'm just going to pick a number. I'm going to try two. And I'm going to see if that works. And depending on the size of your fish and the size of your treasure chest, you might have to adjust this a little bit. Then you want just the lid to turn. Now, if you were using your position tool and setting up your scene, you know that you had it turn backward 0.125. Now we're going to have it turn forward 0.125, but remember, it's just the lid. So I'm going to click on the treasure chest, but I want to go to the subpart, so I'm going to click on my arrow. Here's my treasure chest, here are the subparts, and here's the lid. It only has a few choices, and I wanted to use the turn. It's going to turn forward 0.125. This is a good time to stop and do our incremental development, run the program, get everything to work. You might have to come back and adjust numbers. And then we're ready for the final steps. For our final steps, the shark and Emmett the fish are both at the same time going to turn to face the treasure chest. Then Emmett is going to say, I do not think she's hungry. And you're going to have your own ending. So let's add in another comment. The comment could just be ending or it could be something similar. Now you noticed in the movie that they are going to turn at the same time. So I need another do together. We're going to come down here to the bottom, use our do together. This is going to have two different objects and that's fine. You can and do together. So one of them is going to be Emmett. He's going to turn to face the treasure chest. And I'm also going to have Phil turn to face the treasure chest. They're going to do it at the same time. Then I'm going to have Emmett say, I do not think she is hungry. So here's my say. You can test this with your incremental development. And then I encourage you to add a few more lines of code just to kind of customize this and make the ending your own. 
run the program. You know, remember your fourth step, test and debug. Get everything perfect and correct just the way you'd like it. You've already got your comment section at the top. You're ready to save it. Save it in your backpack in your own student account and save it in the backpack for a grade.